guys back at black acre ranch good to have you with us my name is jeff taking a quick look at the buffalo we've actually got some pig stuff to do later today and it involves a sharp instrument and some nads so we want to show you the buffalo first before we feed them their actual supplement <laughs> is them number 92 they still look really good she's kind of feisty you can tell from all of the actual calves they're getting big right they're starting to change colors not so much that orangey kind of color anyway most of the time when we show you guys these animals they're always sitting way yonder over there because they're fighting for food hey Debbie what's up girlfriend she's short she's stout but she's got a nice hump on her. But anyway, the animals are always fighting for their food. And so we thought, well, geez, why don't we just show you these animals before we get over there? You can tell all these calves are generally about the same height. Some are a little bit smaller. This one's a wee bit weeier. But otherwise, they're all sitting here black-faced. And the rest of the body is starting to change. If I shut up long enough, you can hear the moms calling for their calves. And they're just staring at me. All right, so number four, I don't know her name. <laughs> Bug knows all these names. 18, that is the cow I never see. But she does exist. She does exist. So here are all the little moms. What we've been noticing recently is a lot of these calves are actually eating a lot of hay. So one theory is, you know, you want to go ahead and supplement these calves with a, uh, a creep feed. You know, where you could actually sit there and um, help them transition from milk, like this chick, to a solid feed. But my experience looking at these guys, man, in other years is these cows, they do start to wean about six months or so anyway. And these were born April and May for the most part. So by the time we do all the weaning in November, they'll probably be pretty well worked down, right? Weaned almost. But like you see this little guy. They find their own hay and they start eating. And these guys have been eating it. In fact, they eat the supplement and they eat the hay. So anyway, this is the buffalo herd that's over here. The other part is way over there. And I don't think they're coming over because they're waiting for food. And that's where the two bulls are. But anyway, yes, 18. I know, I know. Oh, and here's little kisses. Our one eye wonder. If you don't know, guys, her right eye, if you see that little cloudy spot, she got injured in her right eye, and she's actually blind to some extent in her right eye. You see that? Oh, So she doesn't see too well. So she is kisses. All right, we're gonna let these ladies eat and continue going. You can tell that they are making a mess of things and we could use some better hay feeders. Um, but that's another day, another fight, a different time. All right, let's go check these guys over there and hopefully bring some food so you can see the bulls. Oh, man, you gotta let us in, boy. There's a crowd up here at the gate. 92, hey, what made you come over here? They've gotten a lot more accustomed to this handling facility now that we've had them working through it. So when it comes time that we have to wean these calves off and work them, I think it'll be a little bit easier. All right, Bartok, you gotta move, dude. Looking good, Bartok. Looking real good, dude. I expect good things from you, you know that, right? Howdy, Nadine. Oh, that's our youngest little calf. Gosh. First one is always the hardest, guys. Nope, 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 I'm gonna cut you off. I'm gonna cut you off, I'm gonna cut you off. Nope. And they get too clustered. All right. <clears throat> hey, Ahmed. Pretty sun, guys, with all the dust. I think we've only washed my truck once in the two years we've lived out here, guys. <laughs> like, this is the reason why.
You can see all the sand, guys. It's seriously like drowning. This is what it's like, guys. Just sand. There it's solid, but it's got about three inches of sand on top of it. So this is them. This is the customary picture you guys are all so accustomed to, right? The one that you guys see. A couple days ago when we were feeding them, everybody stood still in their own troughs for like three minutes, and it was really cool. Nobody shuffling around or anything like that. Having six troughs makes all the difference. That's about one... It's about four per trough, I think is actually really good. On adults, you can't get much more than that. On the yearlings, we could get like eight of them on a trough and it wasn't that big a deal, but not these guys. All the moms look good. We're gonna leave these guys here. These are our little calves. We still have 17 of them. The moms look great. The bulls look good. Bartok's looking great, man. If you saw him two years ago, you'd be like, wow, that dude's some champ. He's looking really nice. So anyway. Let's get over the pigs, because we've got some work to do on those two. Today is the day that we castrate them. We take two boys and make them... Oh, well, they're still boys. But anyway, they're not going to be as comfortable. And we adjust... And of course we're going to, I guess, wake them up. Not so nice of dreams. we got our little dogs with us. Hey, Lizzie. Oh, yeah, Lizzie, She's Lizzie. so hyper. And there's our little puppy, our little bear. Our little bear, Darcy. <laughs> All right, guys. Oops. Got to find these pigs. All right, here's one. We got to find the boys. Now, we tried grabbing them before, and Harriet was definitely aware when they started to squeal. Harriet's over there. And this one is Ariana. Yeah. Anyway, pigs... Oh, that's a boy. So we got to figure out how to do this in a safe way. And this is the boy right here. So we got two boys sitting right over here by Ariana. All right, let's see how we get this done. Okay, so our idea is that we're going to send one of our children in there to go pick up the pigs. Um, we don't want them right next to the mom when they do this. So we're trying to figure out the strategies. <laughs> Not sure how this is all going to work out, guys. But um, yeah, kind of moms get back down. And we're going to see, maybe could we lure the pigs? But... Once we get the pigs, there's only two, two boys just right up here. We might put them in the here or we're just gonna have one of our kids hold one and have the other one hold the other. And then we're gonna take them away from mom on the other side of the hay in the pavilion probably over there and do our little, our little work. Why don't you go get one of the pigs and see if you can pick them up and bring them over here. Maybe Sharla and Sandra hold them. That's one of them. Grab a flag. Just pick it up so it doesn't squeal. Okay, Sandra. Take the pig up before I get run over. Go sit in the bed with her. Go, go, go. You have one job, and that's keep the pig quiet. <laughs> The mothers are uh, awake. All right, why don't you go over there and go give it to your mom across the fence over there to our left. That's probably the boy, isn't it? Yeah, figures. Okay. 
So guys, now you know how I feel, right? Hmm. All right. That's how you treat all your men? You make them squeal like that? Hey, you can only, you're the only one who can answer that question. Oh my gosh. All right, let's get over there. I'll meet you back over under the pavilion. All right, she's consoling them. They are cute little piggies, though. They're getting so big. They're getting kind of stout, chunky, aren't they? Good boys. Good boys. Good boys. All right. <clears throat> This is what we're gonna be using, guys, a sharpened scalpel. A castration kit from Tractor Supply. We've got three number 10 sterile blades and three number 12 sterile blades. I'm just gonna grab a sterile blade. Now, as a dude, you do have some sympathy with this. We do need to do this. These are not gonna be breeding pair. This is gonna be ones that are just uh, slaughtered for meat. So you don't want the testicles having all that testosterone, getting that taint in the meat. Wow. Piggies! Shh! Yeah, that made it worse. Anyway, you don't want all the taint in the meat, so once they start getting maturity and other things like that, they're going to start having more of that stuff in the meat, and so people don't like that. Let's get to it. Is that like a headlock, or is that just uh, comforting? Comforting. Comforting, okay. All right, we've got a lot of poo down here. Okay, Chica, give me a scalpel. Let's get this thing inserted. What we're going to do is we're going to put a pig into a bucket. There's different ways to do this, guys. I am not going to show it to you on the film, just because there's plenty of people out there that show how to do this. Really just gotta immobilize the pig as best you can. Don't splay his legs open and uh, immobilize him, get the little gonads up and uh, then you just do an incision and pop it out and cut it and then put some spray on it. So we're gonna get everything ready here. So I'm gonna cut you off the camera here and join you back in a few minutes. The method we're just gonna be doing now that I've got my scalpel is we're gonna just put their heads in the bucket. I saw this on Red Tool House. Look, seriously, just go look up castration of pigs if you wanna watch it. They'll show it to you there. I'll show you their gonads in the back end where they're accessible, but really all it is is doing a slice incision and popping the testicle out, pulling it. Some people just rip it all right out. I'll probably just cut it and then throw it off to the side then do the other one and then we'll spray it. Dog, here. With this uh, spray at the end, we're not gonna suture it back up. Um, what's that stuff called again? Iodine. Iodine, yeah. So we'll spray it, we'll clean it, we'll do it, but I'm not gonna put it on camera. If you wanna see that, go watch somebody else's. All right, so let's get a pig over here. Dog, hold my scalpel, please. So as you can see, here's the little testicle. We're gonna catch you guys later when we're done with all this. Well, the deed's done. We're going back home. You did it. You survived. You did it. Yeah. You little piggers. I got some iodine on me. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We're going back to mom's. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's okay. It's okay. All right, we got him done. Just trying to clean my hands off a little bit. And let's get them out of here and uh, put them back in. All right, you can see the pigs. We sprayed iodine on their rear. <clears throat> They'll be fine. Yes, it's dirty. They're just gonna rub their stuff in the ground. They're just gonna like rub it anyway. So, you know, stuff I've seen online, they're just like, dude, just leave them alone. You don't, you don't sew it back up. Just put some of that iodine spray or some other stuff on it and uh, let the pigs be a pig. So I will say just some things to remember. Um, these pigs are five weeks old. Their gonads are pretty big. Like, I mean, look at this, Hagrid. He's like a year old, man. Look at the size of his gonads. I know that guys, I mean, just look at it, seriously. Like, 
The size of the balls on pigs proportionate to their size of body is ridiculous. Like, if you can do it before five weeks, I would probably do it. Like, I know people have done it like, what, a week old? Anyway, I'd probably do it around the two week mark if it was me next time. Um, five weeks, it's just getting pretty big to handle and they're getting a lot stronger and everything else. Bucket approach, like I tried, I don't think is really the best way to do it. Um, I saw a guy who had a castration stand for pigs. You can look that up online. Um, I think that is amazing. It immobilizes the pig really well. But at this size, man, they just, they're a lot to handle. You put their head in the bucket and you start going at it. And one of the concerns is, or do I cut my daughter? I think I actually nicked her once. Eh, I can't find it, it's gone. So anyway, I guess she says it's not too bad, but it's just holding them still is really a pain. So anyway, the pigs are fine. You can kind of see him rubbing his butt in the sand a little bit. You know, they should be fine. So in a couple of days, they won't even realize what's happened and it'll be healed up, right? They'll heal really, really, really quick. So that's it, guys. These guys should be leaving hopefully within a couple of weeks, at least one of them. And then we'll raise the others for slaughter and uh, have some more pig meat for sale. I'm not sure when we're gonna breed these guys next. Um, the next thing I think we're gonna do is just breed one, not both of them. We don't want the same kind of situation we had before where they're all at the same time. So what we'll have to do is get like another pen so that way they can have more of like a farrowing pen and then this is where the other one is and we can send them back and forth with hog rids. So anyway, those are some things we're thinking about. Oh, poor little guy, you're just rolling around in it. I can't even tell you which ones are the boys anymore. <laughs> but uh, so that's a future update for the pigs. The things that we're gonna be doing in the future, ideally at some point, we still have plans for this. I think this is where we're gonna put the dogs. So that'll be the dog run. We'll build something up there for them. Um, it's just been like killer, 108, 109, 107. Like it's just been stinking hot that I am not gonna be working out here. Even on Saturdays, guys, it's just brutal. Okay. So. I know everybody's suffering from this heat wave. Wichita Falls, or Wichita, Kansas, I think was like 110. Anyway, just crazy temperatures for every one of us. I wish this high would leave um, and El Nino actually kick in sometime. So anyway, we're gonna leave it to, with you guys here. And, uh, and we appreciate you guys following along with this. Keep with us, the pigs are getting big. I wanna weigh them before we get rid of them in a couple of weeks and see kind of what their weights are. But otherwise they're happy, they're fun. And we enjoy seeing our little piglets. They bring a lot of joy. So anyway, catch you guys later next time at Black Acre Ranch. Bye.